phone call. Hola, Hi. sister. How are you? Good. How are you guys doing? Yeah, not too shabby. Not too shabby. What's up? Not much. I was just thinking about you guys and wanted to see how the boat was coming. Nice. Yeah, it's coming well. We've almost got all the lead we need to pour the ballast keel. So where does it go? In the boat? Like the very bottom, the front, or across the whole bottom? Uh, across like 10 feet towards the middle at the very bottom of the boat. So like a 10 foot section in the very bottom of the boat is like a 16 by 16 by 10 foot length of lead. And then there's another 2,000 pounds of lead that gets stacked inside the boat when it's done. The stuff on the bottom is going to get bolted on. So there's seven one and a quarter inch diameter silicon bronze bolts that are going to bolt that to the lead keel. And then the rest of it we're going to pour into triangular shaped ingots that will fit on top of the keel and they'll just get stacked in the bilge in the bottom of the boat. We've got, I think, almost 7,000 pounds now. We need like another three and we'll be able to pour the ballast keel. So what's the total lead count that you need? All said and done, it'll be 12,000 pounds. That's a lot of lead. <laughs> it's a lot of lead. So that's 12,000 pounds of lead that we've been collecting very slowly. We've accumulated a lot from old flashing to wheel weights to diving weights. So far the most challenging, but yet rewarding, has been this. We were contacted by someone who had his sights on restoring an old fiberglass boat, but due to life, needed to get rid of it. So he offered us the 4,000 pound lead keel that was still buried inside her fiberglass hull. We rented a truck and trailer, drove out there, got ready to haul around the trailer and drive her home. We may have been a little bit overzealous. Hopefully don't rip those tie-out points out of the truck. Yeah, that wouldn't be good, huh? In the end, we weren't able to get it onto the trailer hole, so here we go. As the videographer, I got out of most of the dirty work, and so I do have to thank Steve and our new friend for doing the dirty work of prying apart all of this fiberglass. Especially Steve, only a couple months out of ankle surgery. Uh -oh. It was a long, arduous day of prying the lead heart out of this fiberglass shell. It took us most of the day, but we finally managed to wrestle the three massive pieces of lead from this boat. Now the thing was trying to get them in the back of the truck and into the trailer. These are way heavier than you would imagine. <laughs> Although, with a come along and a pulley system, you'd be surprised what you could move. A come along is the ratchet system that we're using here. Although slow, it is a wonderful tool for pulling heavy things to where you need them to be. Though, there can be some mishaps. You just need to make sure that everything is tightened down. Alright? Yep. One of the quick links that we were using was not completely threaded and you can see what the force of that did to it. Once the majority of that big piece was on the trailer, it was the final stretch. <laughs> Look at him go, ladies and gentlemen. 
That is a U-Haul trekking trailer. I do have to admit, we weren't 100% honest as to what we were doing with this, but props to you, U-Haul. Everything held up. Alright. If you would wear it. Oh yeah, definitely. You give you an acorn to Arabella shirt. Beautiful. Thank you. So there's that. <laughs> All worth it. Nice. We owe you. Thank you. Great, you want to say anything to us? Uh, just good luck. Uh, invite me to the launching. We will, for sure. And, uh, yeah, yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you. All right, well, we're going to well, try to wrestle us out of the truck. All right, guys. It's great to meet you. And we'll right. be in touch. Good day, Sorry Mark. This. Thanks. <laughs> Take care. You too. Thank you. All right. So we got the 4,000 pounds of lead in the back of the truck. Maybe more. Maybe more. And a lot of other stuff. Yeah. It's what, 5.40? We have to make it back to the U-Haul place with this truck at 7 o'clock. So we have, what, an hour and 20 minutes to get all this shit out and driven him back to the U-Haul? Yeah, we got like 45 minutes to get 4,000 pounds of lead and a bunch of equipment <laughs> out of the truck and trailer without destroying the truck and trailer. So, this is going to be an experience. Oh, Super duper ridiculously tired. What's up, Akiva? I don't know if you can see him up there. Yeah. Anyways, what a day yesterday. Oh man. We went out to Worcester and wrestled 4,000 pounds of lead off a sailboat and a bunch of other goodies. So we, rent, we returned the U Haul at 7 last night just as they were closing. Got cleaned up, went out to dinner. Got back at like, oh, I don't know, 10 o'clock maybe. And then six o'clock this morning, Alex went off to work. And I got up, got cleaned up out here because we just kind of dumped everything last night. Got the tractor started and it's now eight o'clock. 
and uh, about ready to add the last piece of lead to the pile. So I thought I'd show you how much easier this is when you have a tractor. Tractors make some things so much easier. So here are some of the goodies. An anchor, some winches, some big chunks of bronze we can use, a cleat. Some of it we use, some of it we may sell or barter or trade. Some of it will end up getting melted down and made into other things. We also got a big old bucket of chain and a rudder. So we got to cut the rudder apart and free that silicone bronze from it. We'll melt that down. So with all that lead, how exactly is this boat going to float? I feel like it would just sink. <laughs> uh, it's the same way big heavy metal boats full of cargo float. It's all about displacement. So the boat displaces more water than the boat weighs. So therefore it floats. diagram. Yeah, that's coming. Archimedes is principle of flotation. Any object wholly or partially immersed in a fluid is brought up by a force equal to the weight of the fluid displaced by the object. Huh? All right. Basically in this situation, there are two forces that are going to be important. There's weight, which is basically the force of gravity, and then there's buoyancy, which is the force of the water pushing back up on the object. When something enters the water, it pushes out a volume of water equal to its own volume. This is called displacement. You can see that in the little container next to the bigger container. Once the object is in the water, at this point there are two forces acting on the object. Those are the two forces that we spoke about earlier. Gravity, which is the downward force, and buoyancy, which is the upward force. Gravity is basically the object's weight. The force of buoyancy is going to be equal to the weight of the water displaced by the object. And you can see that in the little dish on the side, the water displaced in this case is two. All objects in water have a buoyant force acting on it, and therefore all objects in water appear to have a loss in weight. So if you look at the scale up at the top, the object, once in the water, does not weigh five, it weighs three. If an object displaces an amount of water equal to or heavier than itself, the object will float. This is the principle that makes large ships float. The amount of water that they displace due to their size is heavier than the ship itself, and therefore the buoyant force is what acts on the ship to keep it afloat. Oh, hey there. Just uh, having some fun playing with my toy boat. You know, sometimes you gotta take a break from boat building and get in touch with your inner child. So we get a little boat here. Made it out of a, just a piece of water bottle, old water bottle. Made it catch rigged, just like Arabella. So there's a main mast and a mizzen mast. And we're going to use this to demonstrate ballast in a sailboat and why it's so important. So this boat has no ballast in it whatsoever. And if you put it in the water, it just falls over. And the reason it does that is because of the weight of the mass and the weight of the sails. There's nothing to counterbalance that force. So to do that, to counterbalance it, you add ballast. And in our case, this is lead. So we're going to use this piece of lead here. Get it strapped on. And now we have some ballast on the bottom of our boat. So if we put that in the water, all of a sudden our sailboat stays upright. And you can see even with the breeze, oh this is perfect, we've got a little natural breeze here. Just pushes the boat around, but it stays upright. Okay, so what the ballast does is that chunk of lead is a counterbalance for the sail. Basically it acts like the big fulcrum. And you can think of the water here where the boat floats as the pivot point of that fulcrum. So if I didn't have that piece of lead, there's too much weight up here, and the fulcrum, there's not enough resistance, it just falls over. But by adding the lead, 
the more I push down on the mast, the lead comes up close to the surface of the water, and that's not where the lead wants to be. So the lead wants to fall back down and be in line. So that action, that resistance of the weight pulling down on the boat is what pushes the sails upright and counterbalances the force of the wind. Now if we got a big gust, see it'll start to tip the boat, and that's called healing. You can see it doesn't take a whole heck of a lot to get the boat to tip. Now if you hear of a boat being called tender or cranky, the ballast could be part of the reason. So if there's a big gust of wind, the boat really reacts strongly to it. You can also see the boat's not sitting very deeply in the water. And this boat with a light ballast would be tender and cranky. It wants to tip a lot. That under there. So now we have double the ballast, and the two of these weigh infinitely more than the boat and the sail does. We sit a little deeper in the water, and we're going to be even more stable. So if you get the boat to sit here, and a big gust of wind comes along, See, the boat barely moves. So before, with very little ballast, it didn't take much effort to push the sail over. So it had been really tender. But the upside of that is that the roll speed, how fast it goes back and forth, is slower. So yeah, you tip farther, but you do it a lot slower. You add the more ballast, and the motion gets faster. So yeah, you don't heal as much, but when you do, you come back a lot quicker. So it's very important to have the correct amount of ballast in your boat, and that has to do with the size and shape of your sails, the size and shape of your hull, where that ballast sits. There's a lot of variables that go into it. Um, but having a properly ballasted sailboat makes a huge difference, because you can see with no ballast, the boat falls over. With too much, it's really stiff, it's a really fast motion, and with too little, you're kind of just flopping all over the place. Well, I think that's all we have for you guys for now. I think I'm going to hang out here in the sun for a little while. And pretend there's a storm! <laughs> See? Boat stayed upright. Hey guys, we hope you liked this last video. If you did, please click the like button below or hit subscribe. We'll be having videos coming out every other Friday, so you can follow along and watch Arabella get built. If you really want to do something awesome though, please consider becoming one of our patrons on Patreon. Thank you guys so much, and we hope to see you soon.